hello friends let us uh, resume our discussion on uh, categorizing different thermodynamic variables so the thermodynamic variables they essentially help us describe the state of the system so we saw in the previous lecture that the reason we are able to identify or call certain variables as thermodynamic variables is because by fixing this variables we are essentially fixing the state of the system so therefore we can describe the thermodynamic state of the system using this variables and therefore or thus we refer to them as the thermodynamic variables now depending on the nature of this variables we can categorize these variables so one way of categorizing the thermodynamic variables is dependent and independent variables so as the name itself indicates even though you might have a wide uh, and huge set of different thermodynamic variables that is requ uh, required to describe the state of the system you just have to identify specific variables that are independent in nature or using which you can calculate the rest of the variables so these variables that you need to know in order to calculate the rest of the variables and ultimately the state of the system is referred to as the independent variables now one critical aspect of differentiating or identifying the independent variables and the dependent variables particularly and also relating the independent variables to the dependent variables is that even though thermodynamics is largely a theoretical study when you are considering or or uh, attempting to employ a thermodynamic understanding to a physical setup the physical setup might impose certain restrictions it might impose for instance like we saw in the previous lecture it might uh, make assessment of a particular variable quite difficult when compared to other so if you are studying a system just where the variables are temperature pressure and volume the setting might be in such a way that when you are physically or experimentally studying as a system the setting might be the apparatus that you are using to study that system might be built in such a way that it is possible for you to measure volume and pressure and not the temperature directly so in that case even though the theory states that volume is the dependent variable and temperature pressure is the independent variable given that we know a relation that relates all these variables and our uh, physical system that we have makes it difficult for us to measure the temperature then we can consider pressure and volume as the independent variable and from that we can estimate the dependent variable so this is something that uh, understanding or distinguishing a given set of variables into dependent and independent types in a physical condition how it is important to us so the criticality of distinguishing these as independent and dependent variables is associated when you have face a real system now in this all is possible because we are able to relate the independent to that of the uh, dependent variables we are able to arrive at an expression that relates both independent and the dependent variables we also saw there is another way of categorizing the set of variables so far we can just categorize it as we have not considered the other aspect or the other category of the variable so therefore we can so far refer to it as the state variables and as of now we will call them as non state variables so these state variables what we mean by them is we can uh, identify or say a particular variable is a state variable by considering one of these two aspect supposing you are considering a change in the state of the system and uh, associated with this change in the state of the system this particular variable that you want to uh, uh, see if it is state or non state variable it also changes now this change exhibited by this variable when the system changes from one state to another state is just the difference in the value of value assumed by this variable in the new state and its original value then that particular variable is the state variable so one way of identifying if a variable is state variable is just by, just by comparing two states the initial state and the final state and just by seeing how this variable has changed and if the change in the variable um is just the difference between the initial and the uh, final and the initial state then it is the state variable now uh, another way of posing it or another way of presenting it is that if you start with an initial state one you move to uh, the final state or another state 2 and then you get back to the initial state 1 again so you start with a state move to another state and get back to 
the original state so in this case what essentially you are doing is you are doing a cyclic sort of an operation start with one state move to another state and come back to its original state now since if your variable is the state variable in the first change that is one from two let us assume your variable is volume this delta v will be v2 minus v1 in the first case that is from one to two the delta v will be v2 and v1 now in the second case that is from v, uh, the state 2 to state 1 to its original state will be v1 minus v2 now the overall change in the volume will be v1 plus v2 so this state and this change in state plus this change in state so ultimately what you would end up with is that there is no change ultimate change in the volume so this is one of the characteristic features of the state variable if you consider a cyclic change in the state you start with the one point you move to another point and then come back to the starting point if this point can be uh, say just what we have just considered here is you start with one point move to two and then get back to one so instead of just adding one intermediate point here you can have any number of points but ultimately when you end up with the starting point here then the overall change in the state variable is zero so this is a corollary of one of the way of identifying the state variable that is if the state variable is identified by just by considering the difference between the initial and final state so that is one way of describing the state variable whenever there is a change in the system the state of the system the change in the state variable is the difference between the final and the initial state and now the change in the state of the system is in the form of a cycle it starts from one point and comes back to its original point then the overall change in the state variable will be zero so you have one way of identifying the state variable and from that you are able to state that whenever there is a cyclic change in the state of the system the state variable will not change when, it, when you reach back to its original position there is no change in the state variable now this can be written as uh, you know when you use uh, this look like uh, integral form when you write it there using this uh, cyclic integral then if you have uh, the change in the volume over uh, the overall uh, change in the state of the system like this here cyclic change in the state of the system will be zero so whatever we have seen here can be expressed in this manner you know mathematical way so you have a closed integral that is cons considers uh, a cyclic change in the state of the system and when you are exclusively considering the state variable the closed integral of the state variable it is equal to zero because it depends on the initial and the final state alone and now the initial and the final state is the same state so ultimately you have zero change in the state variable so this is one of the corollary of the initial description of the state variable the other way of looking at or defining a state variable is that if when you have a set of variables and you just add the state of the system you don't know where the system has been or where the system will be so in order to describe the particular state the system exists right now you will be using certain variables and those variables are referred to as the state variables so these variables help us describe the state of the system without any prior knowledge of what has happened what was the state of the system earlier and what will be the state of the system in the future so the state variables are the set of variables that help us define the state of the system without any prior knowledge of the history and the future of the system so this is another way of defining or identifying the state variables two ways one is considering the initial and final state the difference is just the initial and the final state and no it does no matter uh, how many intermediate steps you take that's that's the way of defining a state variable now the other way of identifying a state variable is you consider the state of the system you ignore its history and its future now whatever variables that is used that is required to describe the state of the system be it independent dependent whatever it is then that we refer to as the state variables state variables they do not in this definition or in this way of identifying the state variables they do not consider the history or the future of the state of the system now this when you have a system that is exclusively being described by the state variables it gives us certain flexibility it helps us introduce any number of intermediate steps since the overall change is just described by the initial and final state so this is where we ended our previous lecture so when you have a system that is exclusively described by state variables so we have a system that is for example we have pressure 
temperature and volume so we saw all these three are state variables now when you have a system that is described by these variables which are exclusively state variables then when you when that particular system changes from one initial state to two initial state since this system is again exclusively described by state variables you can introduce any number of intermediate steps we will uh, that will not change the initial and final state of the system so we saw in the previous lecture that v1 if it is described by p1 and combination of one uh, p1 and t1 and it changes to v2 which is a combination of p2 and t2 now this change in the state of the system can also take a different path that is instead of directly moving from v1 to v2 it can move to an intermediate path that is va which is again described by its own combination of pressure and temperature and to the final state of p2 and t2 so since these are these states are exclusively defined by the state variables both these are equivalent so the ultimate change in the states are equivalent so that is what one of the uh, characteristic features of the states that are exclusively described by the state variables so it is possible for us to include any number of intermediate states we saw that when we consider the overall change in this uh, state of the system by considering the change in the volume then here that case is b case 1 then the change in the volume this case 1 will be equal to this case here that is case 2 wherein we have an intermediate step so the change in the volume will be equal to case 2 so it doesn't matter how many intermediate steps we uh, include the initial and final change in the state of the system will remain the same only if and only if if uh, when your system is exclusively described by the state variables alone okay now we saw at the end of uh, the previous lecture that this allows us to simplify the change in the state the way we express the change in the state of the system now let us see what we mean by that now so far what we have been considering is rather straight forward expression that relates a given variable alone so far we have just consider change in the volume change in the temperature change in the pressure which is nothing but the difference in them so we have not uh, uh, we have not uh, uh, numerically or mathematically explained or express the change in the state of the system so let us try to do that now one way of considering the change in the state of the system that is from p1 that is associated with p1 and t2 to v2 that is associated with e1 rather p2 and t2 so what essentially is happening is like we considered at the end of the previous lecture is that in this change in the state of the system both pressure and temperature are simultaneously changing so we have a state of the system and we are changing the both pressure and temperature of the system so we have two variables that are simultaneously involved so we have change in pressure and also change in temperature so these both needs to be accounted simultaneously in order to express the change in the volume dv so these both change in pressure and change in temperature they need to be accounted for to describe or to quantify the change in the volume that characterizes the change in the state of the system now since both these systems are described large or exclusively based on the state variables we can introduce an additional step that help us simplify the way of expressing the change in the volume so in order to do that so let us introduce an additional step say v1 from v1 to uh, from instead of directly moving from v1 to v2 we have an intermediate state that is va wherein the pressure changes from p One to P A, but the temperature stays the same. And in the other case, from V A, we move to V two, where the pressure is it stays the same, but temperature changes from T one to T two. So here, let us here the P A is equal to P one, so it is better for us to rewrite it as. Um, This P A as 
P1 directly. So what essentially is happening is that, or rather P2, a mistake. So what essentially is happening is that instead of considering a change in the state of the system directly from V1 to V2, where both pressure and temperature are simultaneously changing, we are taking or considering an intermediate step. In this intermediate step, initially only the pressure changes to its final value, the temperature remains the same. And after we reached an intermediate step where the pressure has already reached the final value, we are considering an, at, at the step from the intermediate to the final step where the temperature is changing since we have already achieved the final pressure. So let me repeat, instead of going from P1 to P2 uh, or rather P1 uh, to P2 and P1 to T2 simultaneously, we are taking or uh, considering a midpoint uh, um, rather an intermediate point where from V1 to this intermediate point, only the pressure changes to its final value. And from the intermediate point to the final point, the temperature reaches the final value. So we are breaking it down into two different steps. So in this step, as you can see, in this step, that is from V1 to VA, your temperature is constant. And from VA, that is the intermediate to V2, your pressure is constant. So from V1 to VA, the only variable is dt and from VA to V2, the only variable is or rather, pardon me, from uh, V1 to VA, the only variable is dp, that is the change in the pressure and from VA to V2, the only variable is dt, which is the change in the temperature. Now, let us describe the change in the volume from V1 to VA. If we consider the change in the volume from V1 to VA, let's say this dV for the first step that is from V1 to VA is nothing but we consider the change in the pressure dP from P1 to P2 rather P1 to P2. So this change in the pressure or with respect to the change in the pressure what we have is the change in the volume. So we are considering the change in the volume during the uh, initial or the first change, uh, change in the state of the system. So the way we will be writing this is dV by dou V by dou P dot dP. So let me uh, write it more clearly. So essentially what we have is we are trying to express the change in the volume during the first uh, change in the state of the system. So in order to do that, we are, so the only variable that is involved in the first change in the state of the system is change in the pressure. So that can be expressed as dou V by dou P because the only variable that is changing is pressure with respect to volume and here the temperature is constant. So in order to include the constant temperature in the expression we include it here and the variable that is changing is dp. So when you consider the change in the state of the system from v1 to va there is only one variable that is changing and one variable is constant. The constant variable is mentioned here the varying uh, variable or the changing variable is mentioned here. So again um, constant variable is an oxymoron but uh, in this particular change in the state of the system, we have uh, T that is mentioned here. The, when you have an expression wherein the portion of the variable is here, it means in this condition, condition or in this particular uh, change in the state, this is assumed to be constant. And uh, since T is governed by both temperature and pressure and here only one of the variable is changing, the change in V with respect to P is expressed in form of the partial derivative because we also have T. So what we essentially have is we have an expression for now, we change in the state of the system in terms of the volume, particularly the change in the state of the system from the initial state to the intermediate state. The intermediate state, in this state is characterized by the temperature being constant and just the pressure changing. So in that case, you have this expression here. You have the partial change or the change in the volume with respect to the change in the pressure. And since the pressure is the variable, we have mentioned it here and the temperature is constant, which is mentioned here. 
and we have seen that this change is in pressure is from p1 to p2 it is being shown here now let us consider the next change in the state that is the v2 so this change in the state in the from the intermediate state to the final state it involves the change in the temperature so it involves change in the temperature from t1 to t2 and the volume is correspondingly changing with respect to the temperature however in this change in the state during this change in the state the pressure is constant the variable is the temperature so essentially what we have done is we have separated the change in the state of the system from v1 to v2 into v1 to va and va to v2 we have introduced a intermediate step now by introducing this intermediate step we have fixed one of these two variables to be constant in one of these two steps in the first step that is this here this is in the first step here what we have done is we have assumed the temperature to be constant and whatever change in the volume that is happening it is exclusively due to the change in the pressure and that we have mentioned through this expression here in the second step the pressure has already reached its final value it has already reached its p2 value now we are trying to change or we are essentially changing the temperature and calculating the appropriate change in the volume so that will render us this expression and in this change that is in the step 2 of the change in the state of the system the pressure is constant so the overall change in the volume will be the change in the volume due to the step 1 plus change in the volume due to the step 2 and ultimately we can write the overall change in the volume which is then distinguished into change in the volume due to step 1 and change in the volume due to step 2 this change in the volume during this change in the volume it is important for us to note that the temperature is constant here the pressure is co pressure is constant rather so it can be expressed that p1 to p2 the temperature is constant so the change in the volume due to the change in the pressure again the temperature is constant and the pressure is changing plus this is the second step where since the pressure has already reached its final value we are just considering the temperature so intermediate to final change in the state of the system involves change in the value of the temperature from t1 to t2 and corresponding change in the volume is expressed in this manner and here in order to indicate uh, the constant variable which is mentioned here so whenever you find uh, an expression particularly in the thermodynamic framework with uh, a variable in the subscript it means that during the step in this particular formulation in this particular term this particular variable is assumed to be constant okay so what we have done is we will not be able to arrive at such an expression had it not been that the system is exclusively described by the state variables if the system is not exclusively um, described by the state variable we will not be able to introduce the intermediate term and because we are able to introduce an intermediate state we are able to express the overall change in the volume the overall uh, change in the volume if it is uh, we can also write it as dv so this overall change in the volume because it is um, the system is exclusively um, described by the state variables we are able to represent it in these two terms or else we would have uh, we should have considered both the pressure and temperature in a single term thereby adding a certain degree of complexity to the expression so what essentially can be done with a system that exclusively uh, is described by the state variables is that when such a system changes its states we can consider certain incremental steps in between these two states that will help us simplify the overall expression for the change in the state of the system so had it not been such uh, uh, had it not been uh, the state variables alone then we would have to go for an additional level of integrations in order to describe the change in the state of the system so we need to have double integrals to build integrals depending on the number of variables that are involved however fortunately for us since the system that we have considered is described exclusively by the state variables we were able to introduce an intermediate step that intermediate step we appropriately introduced in such a way that 
then the system changes from the step 1 to the intermediate step we, we ensure that the temperature is constant and when we assumed that the system uh, or we built the consider the intermediate step in such a way that when the system moves from step intermediate step to the final step the temperature is constant so by considering or rather initially from the uh, initial one or stage one to intermediate the temperature is constant and the intermediate to the final one the pressure is constant so by introducing such consideration which is only possible when you have a system that is exclusively described based on state variables we were able to arrive at this rather straightforward expression which is nothing but a chain form a chain rule form of this derivative of the volume so volume is governed by two variables pressure and temperature the state variables help us express this in the form of uh, a chain expression and this chain uh, form of expression or uh, the mathematically we refer to this as chain rule so this is of physical significance this is not we are not purely dealing in uh, theoretical sense we are not purely dealing in an abstract sense even though we have dis uh, uh, dissociated this overall expression based on uh, change in the pressure and the change in the temperature or change in the volume with respect to pressure and change in the volume with respect to temperature even though we have been able to do that it is possible because the system is entirely governed by the state variables so this is one of the advantages of having a system that is defined by state variables now in this case it has been straightforward we have just considered few example uh, of, of rather uh, simple examples of pressure and temperature now you need to understand that whenever you find a system that is described by irrespective of what is uh, the actual nature of the variable if it is a state variable it is possible for you to consider additional incremental steps so if you have uh, say different state variables that will be um, looking into in the subsequent lectures so if you know that these are state variables then it is possible for you to break down the entire uh, change in the state of the system from one point to another point into smaller incremental steps thereby maintaining certain variables to be constant while changing the others so this is one of the features of the state variable dictated state of the system that will be exploited or that can be exploited in the framework of thermodynamics while being theoretically consistent so this is we are not losing anything we are not losing any information by splitting this change in the state into two different states this is what we saw in the previous lecture so even though we are introducing an additional step which was not earlier even though we are taking a detour from the straightforward uh, state 1 to state 2 we are not uh, we are instead of going from 1 to 2 directly even though we are introducing an additional step nothing is changing because all these are state variables by exploiting this feature of the state variable we can break down a complex change in the state of the systems into these simpler expression wherein all we are dealing with is just the change in the volume of the system with respect to a single variable change in the volume of the system with respect to a single variable while maintaining others to be constant so this will be hugely helpful when we have when we describe the states of the system using several different variables that which are all state variables now we can also have um, just we can have a closer look at this expression and this is nothing but change in the volume with uh, with respect to pressure that can be treated as compressibility and this is nothing but change in the volume with respect to temperature which can be treated as uh, thermal expansion so this is just a piece of information particularly uh, that is um, unlike the other concepts that we can understand or relate from this expression this is just a subjective understanding so here what we have is uh, change in the volume with respect to pressure and change in the volume with respect to temperature so these are often um, the features of a given material so therefore these can be these can be replaced by a specific constant and constants and even uh, this expression can even more be simplified so this is just a subjective understanding that you can gain from this exp uh, expression but more importantly so a generalized understanding that you can gain the reason why we have spent even though these concepts might be straightforward the reason why we have spent so much time in understanding this is because in future whenever you find uh, a system changing from one state to another and this system is exclusively described by the state variables alone then please note that 
you are free to play around with it you are free to introduce additional steps so as to simplify the expression that deals with the change in the state of the system so that was the reason why we spent some time on understanding this way of representing the change in the state of the system by including or introducing a additional step now so far what we have seen is that we have exclusively uh, or largely discussed in terms of certain thermodynamic variables we have talked in terms of volume we have talked in terms of uh, pressure we have talked in terms of um, temperature and we have also tried to categorize the different uh, even though we have considered thermodynamics variable thermodynamic variables as a whole we have just considered them as a set of variables and we have tried to categorize them what we have not so far done is we have not considered work and energy in a single framework we have not considered uh, it how it is meant to be considered in the framework of thermodynamic so thermodynamics we saw that it gives us a setting where we can consider both work and energy in a single framework so particularly heat energy and work can be treated in a single framework and i mean single framework in a single expression we can talk work as a change or a form of an energy and the energy can be related to the work done so this we have not done so far so all that we have done is um, to learn some of the basic aspects in order to ultimately understand the way we can treat both energy and work in a single framework now in order to do that in order to arrive at an understanding or in order to express both work and uh, energy in uh, a single equation or a single expression let us first try to understand how the equivalence or how is there any equivalence or how there is an equivalence between work and energy particularly the thermal energy now when you take um, one way of understanding is from the physical observation one way of understanding the uh, the relevance or uh, the inter uh, interdependency of work and the thermal energy is from the experimental or physical observation so when you uh, have a, a work particularly when you consider uh, the purely the new the newton's uh, laws of motion when you have certain objects colliding with each other so when you have certain spherical objects colliding with each other so ideally when you talk in terms of uh, the newton's laws of motion the energy of these colliding objects they get transferred from one another whenever there is a loss of energy due to some friction then what essentially happens is that the energy is lost or um, and this is released in the form of the heat energy due to this friction so when you talk exclusively in terms of uh, newton's laws of motion and you have certain objects that are colliding with each other what essentially happens is in the absence of in, in a purely idealistic case in the absence of any friction there will not be any loss of energy so the energy from one object will be transferred to another however when you consider a realistic case of uh, friction being involved then there is uh, there will be a loss of energy the kinetic energy and the potential energy there will be a loss of it and this loss will be translated often into the thermal energy now when you have an object that is moving you have a, a rather a straightforward expression for the work that is associated with that object and that expression is given by force into displacement so this is how you will quantify the work and when you have a moving object that is colliding with each other you have a force that is associated with it and uh, it is uh, moving so therefore you will be able to calculate the work that is done by that particular object and uh, during that work because of the friction there is a heat loss associated with it so essentially even though what we are considering is just the work done by a set of objects there is also a thermal energy released during it so this is rather a, some sort of a theoretical consideration the way this concept was initially observed was when people were drilling holes and uh, because of uh, during drilling the holes which can essentially be treated as works there was significant amount of heat that got dissipated so you do some amount of work in the form of drilling and during this drilling there was heat that is being uh, that was being produced so what essentially you see is that the work is now being converted into some form of energy so this is one way of understanding how the work and energy is related the other way of understanding is by considering its dimensions now we saw in our previous example that you have a system a closed system and you have a pressure that is being acted on it 
So this is what we considered in the previous case where of a closed system wherein the variables are pressure, temperature and volume. So essentially what you have is you have a pressure acting on this system. Now likewise, like you have a classical definition for work which is nothing but the product of force and displacement. We also have a classical description for energy. So this classical description for energy is nothing but ability to do work. So ability to do work is what we refer to as the, uh, the definition of an energy. So the classical definition of energy is its ability to do work. Now the ability to do work or the ability to do um, any sort of a change, to bring about any sort of the change in a system like this wherein you impose a pressure is largely introduced. This ability comes from this pressure here. So initially you have a system that has uh, uh, that is in a stable state, it is not moving, it is not changing its state. Now in order to change its state, you are imposing a pressure. So the system is now going to do some work and it's going to change its state. And this ability to do work comes in the form of the pressure. And this pressure is not confined to a specific entity but the whole of the system. So the ability to do uh, work for this system comes in the form of pressure and it is all through the system and therefore it can be for the sake of our discussion it can be treated as PV. Again the P here is the pressure that is imposed on the system and V is the volume of the system. So essentially the energy is nothing but ability to do work and this ability to do work is imposed on the system. The AR is imposed on the system in the form of pressure and it is not specifically imposed on an entity but the overall the macroscopic system the overall volume of the system so therefore the energy the ability to work of the system the energy of the system can be treated as the product of the pressure and the volume now the pressure is nothing but force per unit area so the uh, appropriate uh, units will be the dimensions will be newton per meter square now the volume is nothing but beta cube now ultimately the energy of the system, energy what we mean by that is again we are considering a simple framework, we are considering a simple setup, we want to see how the equivalence between energy and work. So this is for our understanding, we want to see just we uh, understand how work and energy are equivalent to one another, we want to see that and for that we are considering a simple setup, this does not have uh, a rather uh, a huge significance in our subsequent study of thermodynamics but this is for our understanding we are considering this example for our understanding to see how work and energy are equivalent to one another so in, in this specific case in this subjective manner we have considered a system wherein the pressure is applied and this pressure is what gives the system now the ability to do work and uh, since this pressure is applied all through the volume then the overall ability to do work is the combination of pressure and volume. Now pressure as the unit of Newton per meter square and volume meter cube. So when you consider the product of these two, the ultimate unit will be Newton meter and Newton is nothing but kg meter per second square and you have an additional meter here. So ultimately the unit of this ability to do work or the energy will be kg meter square per second square. Now, when you impose a pressure, there is a change in the dimension. So when you impose a pressure, there is a change in the dimension. Now this change in the dimension can be calculated as the change in uh, the volume or also it can also be calculated based on change in the length. So you can consider the change in the length component of each of these dimensions and we can uh, quantify the change in the volume because of this pressure. So the work done in this context will be product of the force that is acting on the object and change in the length. So work done as a specific uh, canonical description or canonical definition that is the product of force and the displacement. Now in this context we are imposing a pressure and this pressure is uh, it as I as shown in this expression here it has a force component associated with it. Now in order to be consistent with this definition here we are considering the force component that is associated with the pressure and we change in the length of the system instead of considering the entire volume we are considering the change in the length of the system. Now when we do that now force as the unit of Newton and the change in the length so it will be dl so change in the length will be 
unit of meter. So again, when you train or change this to RSI unit, so you will ultimately end up with this unit here. So essentially, when you consider the change in the state of the system in terms of uh, energy that is involved in the system or the work that is done on the system, you would see that the unit remains the same, the dimensions remain the same. So the energy and work that is being done on our system, the dimensions of both these, even though they appear to be different, energy as the ability to do work, work, the work itself, even though they appear to be different, their dimensions, they remain the same. So this allows us to consider both these different concepts in a single framework. So this example here is to help you understand that even though it might appear that energy and work are two different, of course they are two different concepts, when you consider their dimension, the way they affect their system, there is an equivalence component that is associated with it. And that helps us understand or study this energy and the work in the single framework. This is what gives us the framework of thermodynamics. This helps us post or present or uh, express both work and the energy in a single expression. So again, this example here is for our understanding to see the equivalence of the units or dimension between the temperature uh, in the energy and in work done. So this is uh, this will not have any long-lasting significance in our course, but it is to understand our to gain uh, the understanding of the equivalence between the work and the energy. Now, having observed or having understood that energy and work have rather a similar dimensions, let us try to consider or let us try to arrive at an expression where we treat them in a single framework. So we have again even in this example we have not equated work or we have not related work and energy. All we have done is we have just shown that the units that are associated with energy and the work are the identical. The dimensions are identical dimensionally, they both are same. So the next step in our uh, uh, understand the way in our uh, course to understand the thermodynamics will be to arrive at an expression where the energy and work are dealt in a single setup. So in order to do that, let us consider, first begin by consider, let us uh, begin by considering a system that does not allow the temperature to pass through it. So we will consider now a system that does not allow the temperature to pass through it. Such a system is referred to as the adiabatic system. So we have seen what a closed or rather uh, a closed system is. Now we have an ad adiabatic system and this system will not allow the temperature to change, the temperature to flow out of the uh, from the system to the surrounding. It will not uh, allow the boundaries of the system will not allow the temperature to flow out, meaning it will not allow the heat energy to transfer. So heat energy will not be transferred and we will be considering an adiabatic system. So in order to understand or in order to uh, combine the uh, energy and work in a single framework, let us consider an adiabatic system. We begin by considering an adiabatic system. Now in this adiabatic system, what essentially or uh, what we will try to do is we will try to do some work in the system. So the system allows us to do some work, but it will not allow the energy to pass through. It will not allow energy transfer, but it will allow to do some work on it. So you are allowed to do some work on it. So a simpler example is we can consider a pedal here and we will try to rotate this pedal. Now this rotation of this pedal will increase the temperature of the system. So essentially you are rotating this pedal and this rotation of the pedal is essentially increasing the temperature of the system. So we are doing some work and this work leads to a change in the state of the system that is reflected to through the change in the temperature. So this change in the temperature is possible because there is a heat energy that is being released because of this work being done here. So you are doing a work, a heat energy is being released and this being energy is now responsible for the rise in the temperature. So what essentially you are observing is that the work is being transformed into a form of the energy and the temperature is being 
summarized. Now we need to thermodynamically express the change in the state of the system. So you are introducing a work and the state of the system is changing. Now there are we saw there are two ways of doing it. One way is you are introducing a work, you are doing a work. Because of this work, the entities of this system, that is the atoms that are associated with this system, they begin to uh, it, this work increases their kinetic energy and because of the kinetic energy, because of this increase in the kinetic energy, since you are not allowing for an energy transfer through the boundaries, ultimately the increase in the kinetic energy is reflecting in the form of the rise in the temperature. So this is one way of describing the state of the system and change in the state of the system. Let me repeat, you are doing some work on a system, an adiabatic system. And because of this work, there is an increase in temperature. Now, one way of describing this increasing temperature is by considering the increase in the kinetic energy of the individual entities. And because you have an adiabatic system, since there is no way for this increase in kinetic energy to be transferred to the surrounding, you have an increase in temperature. So this is what we refer to as the microscopic state or the bottom up approach. So this is something that we saw in our first lecture and this is the, the practical instance wherein you can apply that. So essentially when you are doing that, what you are doing is you are considering the microscopic state of each of these entities in the form of uh, kinetic energy and then you are trying to describe the change in the state by saying that because of this uh, kinetic energy we have a change in the temperature, we are seeing the increasing temperature. Now we can quantify the increasing uh, the temperature by considering the change in the kinetic energy of the individual entities which is an adverse task. So instead of taking, taking that difficult path, you can take a rather straightforward alternate path by introducing a definite variable or by introducing a new variable to describe this change in the state. So instead of taking this microscopic path of understanding the change in the state of the individual entities and then translating it to the change in the temperature and then equating it to the change in the temperature. So essentially what you are doing is there is an work being done. You are relating it to the kinetic energy of the different atoms, say several millions of the atoms. And then based on that, you are trying to talk about the heat energy that is introduced. And then you are trying to talk about the change in the temperature instead of doing that. So this will be a bottom up approach or this will be in this will be considered in the microscopic uh, states of the system. So instead of doing that, it is possible for us to consider the system macroscopically and introduce a new variable that helps us understand how the change of the work done on the system rises the temperature. So instead of considering the microscopic uh, states, we can introduce a new variable and this variable will help us relate the work done and the temperature increase. So this is what we do in the framework of thermodynamics. We treat the system in the micro macroscopic scale. So instead of considering the individual atoms and how they translate to the increase in temperature, we consider this microscopic state of the system. Then introduce a new variable that helps us understand the change in the work to the increase in temperature. So in this context, when we want to understand how the work done on a system introduces energy thereby releasing or uh, thereby changing the temperature, how the work done um, help, us, uh, help us describe the change in the state of the system. For that purpose, we introduce a variable called internal energy. So, since we are at the end of our end of the structure, to recap what we are considering, we are considering an adiabatic system, a work is done in that system, there is a change that is being introduced because of this work. Now, in order to study that change, we can either go with the considering by considering the microscopic state of each atoms or we can do that by introducing a, a definite a specific variable that considers the system as a whole. So in that case, we can uh, for that we introduce this variable called internal energy. So in the subsequent lecture, we will see how internal energy helps us describe the change in the state of the system when a work is done on it and also how we can further use the internal energy to see the state when this particular system is extended. So, so far we have considered just an adiabatic system. This internal energy can also be used even this particular system is extended to different forms. So, we will also see how this internal energy can be employed to understand the state of the system. So, we will build on this understanding in the subsequent lectures. Goodbye.